。喂，咁多位大家好，我系 Sir。上次咧，我哋就做咗一条科学探究嘅题目，就系、是、有关于神经系统嘅。咁今次咧，我哋又嚟温下神经系统呢一课嘅其他部分咯。啊，我哋个脑嘅边一个部分系当我哋讲嘢嘅时候咧，系负责协调嘅工作嘅。今日下面答案有四个啦，小脑、运动区域、感觉区域同埋联合区域。呢、这个题目咧就考翻我哋啦。喺个脑嘅不同区域啦，究竟当我哋讲嘢嘅时候啦，喺个语言协调当中，佢哋有咩嘅功能角色咧？第二啦，就系、是、应用翻我哋嘅神经解剖学，即系我哋嘅脑嘅不同部分，佢哋各自嘅结构啊、位置啊、功能啊，同埋佢哋嘅生理学。實質佢哋做啲咩嘢嘅咧？就套用翻喺一個功能性嘅場景底下。今次嘅功能性場景咧，就係講嘢啦。咁其實我哋嘅人生當中咧，有好多呢啲功能性嘅場景嘅。我哋望到個紅綠燈，而家係紅公仔啦。啊，我哋要停低啦。我哋行個麥記，聞到啲薯條味，哎呀，我要流口水啦。咁其實呢個當中都牽涉咗好多唔同類型嘅控制啊、協調啊嘅功能噶。咁而家啦，我哋逐一擊破咯。第一小腦當然係關事噶啦，咁啊因為小腦咧睇翻書本咯，就係、是、負責去協調肌肉嘅運動。咁可能你會問啦，喂唔係喎，梁 Sir， 書本嗰度寫咧係貨乜嘢啊？去保持身體平衡噶喎，當我哋喐緊嘅時候，嗱留意一下啦，呢、这個咧其實只係一個例子嚟嘅啫。對於我哋要做一個動作，而呢個動作係牽涉咗幾款肌肉一齊做嘢嘅話咧。我哋就一定要協調噶啦，因為當 A 肌肉做嘢嘅時候 ，B 肌肉要做咩呢？一個收縮，另一個要放鬆。咁所以對於我哋講嘢嘅時候啦，例如我哋嘅面部肌肉啦，我哋嘅嘴唇啦，我哋嘅下巴啊，幾時要嘟嘴啊？幾時個嘴要合埋啊？又或者我哋條脷啦，要唔要卷曲啊？去發出一啲卷脷嘅拗音啊，諸如此類。又或者啦，我哋講嘢講得好快，或者我哋講嘢講得好慢，係咪都應該要有一個協調啊？咁所以第一咧必然正確噶啦，咁啊 say goodbye to option A 啦，系咪？然後啦，第二啦，運動區，運動區當然關事啦，因為運動區域正正就係將我哋嘅神經脈衝就傳去效應器，今次嘅效應器，咪例如咯，我哋面部肌肉啦，從而啦就做到隨意嘅動作，所以二號咧都係正確嘅。咁所以啦，答案呢就係得 B 同 C 咯。咁究竟係一二三啊，定係一二四呢？咁啊，跟住啦，又去睇感覺區域，原來佢就係唔關事嗰個啦。因為感覺區域呢，原來佢就只係一二三四。因為感覺區域，佢就接收返唔同嘅感應器所傳嚟嘅神經脈衝，然後再分析下啦。哎呀，呢啲神經脈衝咩意思呢？就俾到個感覺我哋。例如我哋嘅觸覺啊、聽覺啊、嗅覺啊，諸如此類。咁同我哋真係而家做緊嘢、講緊嘢呢啲咁嘅 movement response 咧，就冇一個直接嘅關係嘅。所以啦，感應器雖然佢對我哋嘅感應嘅反饋係有幫助，鞋嘅喎、滑嘅喎、紅色嘅喎、綠色嘅喎，諸如此類，佢會俾到個感覺你，但係佢唔係直接。同我哋嘅語言協調有關係，咁可能有同學會諗㗎。喂，唔係喎，梁 Sir， 我而家呢，啱啱睇完電視呢，就話呢，元朗有個女人呢，去踩人隻腳㗎喎。佢佢踩到我隻腳，哎呀，好痛啊！咁咪即係 sensory area 關事囉。但係其實你冇俾佢踩隻腳，你都可以無啦啦講㗎。哎呀，好痛啊！咁死。咁對於你要講嘢呢個情況。其實呢個感覺係咪真係一件咁直接嘅事呢？好似而家我拍緊片咁，我可以自己不斷咁講嘢嘅喎。咁所以原來三呢就唔關事啦。答案啦就會 C。咁即係話聯合區域都係正確啦。聯合區域有咩用呢？就為咗去綜合返由唔同嘅感覺區域所傳嚟嘅信息啦，將佢扣連上我哋嘅過往嘅經歷啦。從而個腦呢，就能夠去做決定啦，將神經脈衝傳去運動區域。咁而家拍緊片啊，最基本當然啦，我隻眼呢，係望緊啲文字嘅。啊，的確咧，我係綜合緊咧一啲感覺區域嘅東西，嗱，啲筆記嘅部分啦，扣連翻啲過往嘅經歷啊，然後我個腦就做決定啦。今次點樣解條題目俾你哋聽好呢？然後再將呢個信息傳翻去我運動區域，咁我先真係做到嘢，解到條題目噶嘛？係咪？你一路講嘢咧，要諗下啦，下下一隻字、下一句、下一秒應該講咩嘢呢？咁所以答案咧就係 C 咯噃。Hello student， I'm Mr. Liang。So last video we are talking about the scientific investigation about the nervous system. So now we are doing the revision about the different concept of the nervous system chapter. 
So this question is asking which of the following parts of the brain are responsible for coordination when one is speaking. Just like me, I am speaking for the debriefing of the MC question. So cerebellum, motor area, sensory area, and the association area. So in this question, we need to understand the roles of different brain regions in speech coordination. And we need to apply the knowledge of neural autonomy. It means different parts of the brain of the nervous system and the physiology to the functional scenarios. So in our daily life, there are different types of functional scenario, not just for speaking, but also when we are walking on the street and then we see the traffic light and it's red light. So we need to stop. So how can you know that you need to stop or okay, that is also a kind of functional scenario? So we take a look at the options one by one. Cerebellum, it is involved. Because for the cerebellum, we know that it coordinates the muscle movements. But you may ask that, oh, no, 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 Mr. Le. For the textbook, it says that cerebellum coordinates muscle movement for maintaining body balance when we move. Actually, it's just one of the examples. I'm sorry. So when we are doing some action, some movement, which involve different types of muscle. So different muscles, they need coordination among them. For example, when we are speaking, we need the facial muscles, our lips, our cheek, okay, different parts of our facial muscle to help our mouth to move properly and also the tongue. For example, when we are uh, uh, pronounce the word area, so for the area, we have the R here, right? So our tongue need to do some rolling. When we are saying this word, so we our mouth need to close. Or when we are saying other words, our mouth need to open. So when we are pronouncing different types of muscles, um, they are working together. So we need a coordination among them. So we can say goodbye to option A. And then motor area is also involved. Because for the motor area, it sends all the nerve impulses to the effector, to our facial muscle, to our tongue, to produce the voluntary response. Just like me, I'm speaking. So I need to keep sending impulse to my facial muscle and the tongue. Therefore, we can say goodbye to option D. And then, should it be one, two, three only or one, two, four only? And we know that sensory area, which is not involved for the coordination, because for the sensory area, it receives nerve impulses from various receptors and interpret them to give sensation, such as sight, touch, hearing, something like this. So actually, it's not directly involved in the speech coordination. Surely, it contributes to processing sensory feedback. It tells you, is something hot? Is it painful? Is it good smell or bad smell? Or is it a rough surface? Or is it something tastes good? However, without such sensation, you can still speak. Therefore, number three is wrong. So, we have the answer, one, two, four, for the association area. <clears throat> it integrates information from different sensory area and relay information to past experience. And then our brain can make decision and send nerve impulses to motor areas to give a response. Just like now, I'm looking at the iPad, then reading the words of this question. Yes, I really get a different information, integrate them from different sensory areas. And then I really relay them to my past experience. How can I present this question to you for the debriefing? And then my brain make decision and then send the nerve impulse to my motor area. And then let me to speak fluently and for the whole sentence to explain the whole question. Therefore, association area is also involved. And the answer is option C.